Today I had the opportunity to call with a Platinum Kingsway producer who's gonna share all of his knowledge, break down the samples and says tips like this. I think mixing different reverbs and like different way they sounds and like the clashing that they give is a cool sound in general. To start off, he broke down an amazing sample, which starts with this. I did this one with Rashad, you know, this is my main collaborator for the most part. Um, so for this sample, I used a reference uh, from Sampa. It's a song called Can't Get Close. So I'll, I'll play that like two seconds of it so you can hear what it sounds like. This is it. All right, so I usually, whenever I use a reference, is basically guiding me through the whole sample. I, for me, for me personally, it's like the easiest way to like really flesh out an idea, even if you don't really know where you're gonna go with it. Um, because you the song already has plenty of pockets that I can hear at least uh to work with. So I'm kind of like improvising off of those pockets that are already there. So with that, I started with these chords, piano chords, from contact, the Yamaha piano. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the Yamaha piano and the vintage upright. I usually layer two different pianos together because they just have, usually it's like one piano has a better tone for me, but the other one has a better overall sound so i try to blend those together to get you know a better sounding piano for me the piano sounds like this As far as processing, the process is very uh, simple. It's just room reverb. Uh, is This utility isn't really doing anything. It was panned harder to the left, but I just put it on one. <laughs> and then I just have this compressor, the CLA compressor. It's basically the only one I use besides um, good hertz. Oh yeah, that room is sounding nice. Yes, right. right. So I took that, just copied it onto a pad. The pad sounds like this raw. Right, and that's that's a cool kind of sound, I guess, but it sounded a little dorky to me, so I kind of <laughs> had to give it some life. So as for processing, I'm pretty sure I use 44th floor. Yeah, he has this Cooper effects pedal uh, kind of emulation. I use this all the time um, as a nice chorus to the sound. I EQ'd out the lows and the highs, kind of to make it a little bit more dull. Um, cause I really wanted it tucked in the background for this B section. Um, I put some good Hertz lossy on here, uh, kind of, you know, dimming out more of the highs and adding more of that water texture to it. And then this might be a room. No, it's a chamber reverb. Um, wow, is nice. Ooh. It's just. 100%. So all those effects just made it sound real, like subtle, very quiet underwater. And yeah, the uh, effects are really nice. Sounds exactly like some Drake. Like he's about to tell me that life's good and shit. <laughs> yeah, I can hear that for sure. Um, then I have these strings from Contact, these old movie strings. I use these strings a lot too. Uh, I don't have a lot of sounds in general, so when I say I use something a lot, it's kind of by force. But I took a very simple pattern, played it on my MIDI. But 
you know, again, it sounds very dorky. So I had to flip it in a way. And I do this a lot with sounds in general. Well, I'll take it with the intention of um just flipping it a million times. So just, you know, chopping it up a certain way. So I did that with the strings here. I, you know, rendered it out to audio and then I chopped it up. It sounds like this. So I did that, half-timed it, just, it was too chaotic for the sample in general, and I wanted this to feel very, you know, dramatic, so I slowed it down with the half-time, then I pitched it back up, because, you know, half-time is gonna, you know, take it down. Then I put this sketch cassette on here, this is basically, for me, is my tape kind of emulation, I like to use this a lot. Um, and then UAD Pure Plate, it's probably my favorite reverb in general. It just has a nice uh, sound to it. Utility is not really doing much again, but you know, it works. <laughs> it's slightly, very slightly mono. I turned it down and slightly panned it to the left. Then I added another reverb on here, uh, Valhalla Cathedral Large Hall. And then with everything together, it sounds like this. Right, so it sounds very like melancholy to me, and you know that was kind of what I was going for. So next, I took my bass and I just played a very simple bass line, just playing the root notes essentially. So raw, the bass sounds like this. Right. I don't really like a lot of high end in my bass, and I also don't like a lot of low end either, which kind of defeats the purpose of, of a bass, but, you know, it, it works somehow. So with the processing, I took out the highs, like a lot of the highs, and I took out a little bit of lows. I put an NS1 on it because it had some fret, no fret noise on there. I really like the white noise. It works sometimes, but I, did, I just didn't. Think yeah, for happened. this sample, it might not have been perfect. Yeah, but put on this Sheps from Waves, uh, basically saturation for the bass. And then I put on Good Hertz Wolf Compressor. Wolf Compressor and R Compressor from Waves are sound great on bass. I, I don't know why, it's just, it sounds so good. But um, yeah, with everything together, it sounds like this. Right. So that's that. Gemini had even more wisdom. Listen to this philosophical quote about music. For me, I think a main thing for me when it comes to music in, in general is like inconsistency. Um, even though it would be cool to have like consistent elements for people to, you know, catch on to, when you have certain things that kind of like fall off of the main like agenda of the music, mm -hmm. it, it's an interesting dynamic. So with the guitar, I played the chords of the piano, but I kind of, when it, I let this last chord ring out and, you know, you'll hear what I'm talking about. So raw, the guitar sounds like this. Oh, yeah. Um, and it just adds a, another kind of swing underneath all the layers that's in here. So I put on a Sheps. I just found a piece that I didn't really want to do a lot uh, of like general mixing for this guitar because I knew I was going to like make it sound crazy in general. Um, so then EQ'd up the highs and lows. And then I went to Guitar Rig. I rarely use this plugin, but it is some crazy 
like sounds in here, crazy presets. Um, so I just found this cream <laughs> no place preset. It, it really brings the guitar to life. And then I just panned it hard to the left. And then sounds like this. Then I just went on to play some little licks, nothing too crazy, just to add some more personality to the guitar in general. Um, the for processing is pretty much the same. I just added a compressor, and I added this chorus, Jimot, probably my favorite chorus. I use this all the time. Oh, yeah, it's branding. <laughs> oh yeah, make it in, but. I just put that on there and I put on a plate reverb from Valhalla. So, wow, you're actually going like opposite of what, what I usually hear. Like usually people always have, have one reverb. I mean, it's for Soul Sappers probably, but you go like 10 different reverbs right here. Oh yeah, I don't know why. I think it's more so a feeling thing. I try not to overthink it too much. Yeah. Um, and I think mixing different reverbs and like different way they sound and like the clashing that they give is cool sound in general. So yeah. I tried. But yeah, with all those effects, the uh, it's not right. so I kinda just wanted it to guitar because the main guitar is really like washed and drowned out, but this has a little bit more like prominence to it so you can really yeah. hear it so i like that you know i like that different different reverbs so if, if you're good, being really intentional with the selection of it if you did it like, huh, i want this sound this sound this sound and all together they create like a weird unique reverb sound is i think it's good to like mix different like plugins and uh like general effects because you might have two different choruses on the same thing, but they kind of apply apply different effects to the sound in general. So when you mix in those plugins together, you can come out with a cool like effect to it. And in the next part, he's going to show us how he creates vocal choirs as well as processes them in a weird way. All right. So when I went to do vocals on here, I accidentally had my reverb on. So the reverb is kind of like stuck. <laughs> So I kind of had to work around it because I didn't really feel like we doing the vocal at all. So the vocals sound like this. All right, this is very simple, like chorus, nothing crazy. On the individual tracks, I just have a compressor and I'm panning them. I have one pan to the right. I have another pan to the left. And then I have one sitting in the middle to balance the two. Are these your vocals? Yes, indeed. Wow, you really improved. Oh, Sounds thanks. really nice. Appreciate that. And then for like the general master of the vocals, I just put a Valhalla Cathedral. Uh, reverb on here, and then I EQ'd out the lows. This is what you hear at every church when you enter. Right. So that I wanted the sample to sound really big. That's really why I'm playing with a lot of reverb. Um, but the book I did that. And then at this point, I was kind of finished with the sample or Rashad, he somehow snuck his way in here. I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't even uh, the topic of him getting on here got brought up, but he added vocals too. Um I'm glad he did because they're fire. So he has a couple different vocal takes in here. He has this main vocal. I kind of went with the same processing I did on my vocal. Mm -hmm. uh, I just added a compressor uh, to the master of it. So his vocals sound like this. Master. 
and far, far time. It's day 31 without you on mine. Alright, and Rashad never tunes his vocals, and I wasn't going to tune it, so I just left the uh, voice cracks in there and just let it. <laughs> um, I think it has personality, so I'm not mad yeah. at it. So, same processing, compressor, Bala, uh, and EQ. I think on the individual track, it's pretty much the same. I added a de-esser, um, because his syllable's a little harsh. Uh, noise suppression on there. Added R Vox. R Vox is probably my favorite thing to put on vocals in general. It just sounds really nice. Nice compression compressor. Um EQ'd out the lows, a little bit of the mids. And then I panned it to the left. I mean I panned it to the right, but I monoed it a little bit. Um it sounds like this. Right, and that's a sample read on. I didn't really want to repeat too many vocals, so I don't think there's any duplicate vocal lines except this choir at the end. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did that just to make it feel more like a song, more like an experience. So it's not too easy to catch on to, but it is something that you can still enjoy. So in this B section here, this is the same effects change, just a different vocal line. All right, did that. And then this choir over here that he did, it's probably my favorite part of the sample in general. Um, same effects chain. I just put more reverb on here. Voila, made it really big. And then the choir sounds like this. This really sounds like some Bon Iver. Yeah, it's really fire. And then that vocal line repeats for the last part of the sample. And I think that's it. That's everything in here. For my master, I pitched it up three. Yeah, I pitched it up by three. And That's then the secret master sauce. For three, pitching it up by three or pitching it down by like three. This is just it. It sounds. <laughs> and then I put on a, some of the volume back from after you know I'm. Um, and plus I just like the way this preamp sounds, but all in all, that it. So simple sounds like this.
Sounds almost like a backpipe. I think it's fairly simple. For simple. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you. Excuse Sounds me. like an interlude to, I don't know, a Bon Iver album. Ah, yeah, that'd probably work. That, that'd be fire if we got to play some, some like that. My advice to sample makers would probably just be, don't be scared to, like, you know, mess up or not make something fire all the time. Because you, you kind of have to get those reps in of, like, okay, this isn't going to work for me, so I can throw it out. If you're too scared to, like, try ideas, you really don't have any way to advance in, you know, what you're doing. Because, you no, know, that's the way humans work in general. We built all this up, and we can make music on our computer because people have challenged, the, you know, the general idea of what is, like, normal for people. So I feel like as long as you're accepting that your flaws and like your musical capabilities and that's not even like a negative thing um just being able to acknowledge that okay this isn't gonna work for this but you can try the same idea on something else you can just all the so if, if you're able to accept that i think you'll be fine oh wow. uh, well no nah, just try it and you'll you'll be surprised on what comes up I'm yeah saying. I 100% agree with that whole thing. Even making like that one bad sample a day to just get it out and improve. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic advice. Everybody should follow that. And they should follow Gemini everywhere. Of course. Buy every single pack. Twice. All three of the King Sway packs. And uh, what's the right pack? Shiloh. 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 Wait, then aren't, you, aren't you working on another one right now? Or... Indeed. Yeah, I you mean, are. With Rashad, so. You're working well with Rashad. Yeah, yeah, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, April the 1st has passed, my brother. <laughs> yeah, I promise. I promise. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him to work on something. This was some amazing wisdom and sample that Gemini shared. If you now might be interested in how to make a dark Q-Beats kind of sample, you should check out this video. Thanks for watching.